Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for April 11th, 2024. Well, let's take a look at what happened overnight. We had Asian markets um, mixed, but mostly lower last night, with uh, Shanghai up just ever so slightly, South Korea up ever so slightly, but then we saw everything else just a little bit lower running into some, uh, you know, just pressure, just simply because of U.S. inflation data. European markets this morning, well, they're feeling some pressure this morning as well. Red across the board here this morning, but actually relatively modestly on the FTSE and the CAC. DAX is down substantially here this morning. So we'll have to see um, how our data today affects this and whether or not we'll pop back up. U.S. futures have been down, and they were down most of the night, and they are trying to um, uh, rally just a little bit here at the moment, coming off of overnight lows but we're looking at down across the board here in u.s futures this morning as we wait for that ppi number taking a look at oil oil started down yesterday and then ended up going higher we um, ended up with oil pushing just a little bit up um, and this morning we are starting just a little bit down we're down 53 cents a barrel at 85 68 and Brent is down 43 cents at $90 and 5 cents a barrel. Natural gas is essentially flat this morning. If we take a look at um, our precious metals, gold is higher again today. Now, yesterday we did pull back and rest on gold, but gold's going up a little bit today. Silver is a little bit higher, and um, copper, platinum, palladium all just a little bit higher here this morning and then looking at our cryptocurrencies cryptos are a little bit higher boy these big thousand point moves in um, bitcoin are kind of uh, it's just not for everyone to be trading this but um, if you take a look uh, bitcoin this morning um, up 800 and $23 a coin this morning and the majority of cryptos are higher here today. So what does all that mean for today? Oh, I forgot. We better take a look at those bonds because those bonds continue to be a problem for the market. Our two-year bond this morning coming in at 4.96, continuing to show some tenacity here. 10-year bond is at 4.55 and our 30-year bond has risen to 4.64%. So a bit of a problem here in that bond market continuing to show pressure overall um, and worries of the inflation. Let's take a look. And by the way, those are bond yields. Bonds are actually moving down um, while bond yields go up. They're inverse of each other, just to be clear on that. So what does all that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Thursday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I very much appreciate it. How about we take a look at these charts, see if we can set aside our bias, really try to look at the chart for what it is, not for what we want it to be, and um, see if we can figure out how we might want to approach the market for today. Now, once again, just like yesterday, when we look at these charts, we have to keep in mind the overall market condition and the things that are happening out there in the market. And clearly the PPI is going to have a bit more importance today just simply because of that hot number of CPI yesterday. So we want to keep in mind that the way we look at these charts this morning, it could change dramatically by the time the market opens, just like we saw yesterday in the diamonds or in all of the indexes with the CPI. So kind of keep that in mind as we go through this. 
Now, obviously, the Bears had a pretty good push here yesterday, pushing the Diamonds substantially lower. And we tried to rally up at the end of the day, but just didn't get a whole lot done um, overall. So Diamonds finishing below a pretty important level of price support here in the chart. And you can see we are struggling here just a little bit this morning, showing a little bit more of that downside pressure. Now, if I come across over here, we've got a little bit, a little bit of price support in the chart right there to be paying attention to. If that were to fail this morning, if we were to get some bad news here on the PPI and send us lower, I think the next level is right down in here. And beyond that, I'm going to pull this back a little bit more. You can see the more important level here in the chart would be down in this area of the chart. So we could see um, pretty substantial downside moves with pressure in the market if, if that PPI number um, engages the bears. Now, if we take a look at the bullish side of this market, and first off, we would want to hold this price support right in here and push back up and retest this resistance here in the chart. Can we push back up into here? And we're going to run into kind of that double whammy here of that downtrend um, in the chart as well that we'll have to deal with if we push up into that area. And if we can, if we can push up into here, well, you can see that next major level up in here is gonna be right across there, a uh, very important level as well that we'd have to push through. Now that would break the downtrend and then we'd start looking at areas up in here to see if we can start breaking higher and pushing on up. And certainly the PPI number could have the power to bounce us pretty substantially. So be prepared for that. Now, another thing you want to be paying attention to is this is the first time we've really dropped for a first time in a long time that we have fell below the 50 day moving average here in the diamonds and notice our short term moving averages are starting to squeeze down on that um, 50 day moving average and and squeeze down on price so any bounce back up we're going to have to deal with that accumulation here of uh, moving average resistance as well in that chart which um, you know can really set up that short squeeze or downside squeeze um, here and not necessarily a short squeeze but a downside moving average squeeze so watch carefully for that possibility here if we look at the spy we have a little bit different picture because the spy so far has been able to maintain itself and hold this pretty key area of price support so if the bears find some inspiration here today and push this lower well you can see there's a price support right down in here if we break that area and if we start pushing below there we start coming down here to the bottom side of those support levels and then there's even this gap here that we could drop into if we really got going to the downside but that's not all going to happen today but you can see those really big um, areas to the downside are possible now if the bulls find inspiration today well then that push up first thing we need to do is we need to break through you know that little wick right here uh, break up through there and if we can then we start pushing up into these resistance levels of the chart to see if we can progressively pro progressively come on up and test that downtrend here in the spy breaking through there would change quite a little bit and and really improve the look of the spy if we can get back up through that area here once again if we look at our moving averages much better picture here on the spy notice we're still holding above our 50-day moving average and this is the effect of big tech big tech doing the majority of the work here right now and we're still seeing analysts like crazy just pumping them and praising these giant techs and maybe they're right but i would be really really careful with over trading this market at the moment so 
think carefully about the risks that you're taking here before you jump in ahead of some of these key economic numbers. So watch that carefully, but I'm gonna say SPY much better. And then if we look at the QQQ, I got to do the same thing here. The QQQ did fall yesterday, but notice it fell and tried to bounce right back. And we haven't even taken out that last Thursday big black candle. So we're still holding in this area. So if the bears were to find inspiration today, that would be the first attack I would look for. Second attack would be this bigger area of price support in the chart to break on down through there. And then um, if they really got going, um, there's a support level right in here that we could easily slip and fall into that area pretty quickly. Beyond that, it gets really ugly here for the QQQ. We'll give it some time here and um, see whether or not those bears can even push down through some of these lows. Then if the bulls can find inspiration here in the in the market, then let's look for a pushback up. We might test the underneath side of this little platform right in here. Um, in the chart, you can see if I extend that over, there's some um, resistance right in here. And then pushing that uh, beyond that, I think this next level is right here. And then of course, we're gonna run into that downtrend. Now pushing up through that area of the chart, we're looking at a possible breakout, and new highs in the QQQ as well and looking at our technicals here again much better here on the qqq we're just hanging in there we're just resting right on the 50-day moving average now if those bears do push us down i also want to point out that we've got that moving average squeeze starting to form up here where we're pushing those things uh, lower so if we were to drop down here in price that moving average squeeze would come become much more important here. So watch carefully on the QQQ if those bears were to engage. And then if we look at our IWM, IWM has turned back over to that bearish side here where we failed this um, lower high in here and we fell right on through this price support here in the chart. We're trying to hang on to the bottom side of that uh, candle over here but you can see pretty easily if those bears were to engage, we're probably going to continue to drop and come down to this trend break that I had in here from, from some time ago. We could come down and test that area of the chart and then even start moving lower if those bears were to really engage here on IWM. And then technically, um, we have failed the 50-day moving average here. So once again that moving average squeeze that rollover in here starting to provide some additional resistance pressure in the russell let's take a look at our vix now our vix yesterday found that little bit of price support right in here on the chart and we bounced up off of there we're continuing to hold that upside trend and if you remember this trend right through here we're holding above that at this moment and coming into this C, uh, this PPI number, this could be really interesting here today. Notice that we weren't able to break through up here. Um, if we got follow through bad data here today and the bears are engaged, I, I might look for that to break um, to the upside here and we could really see some fear come into the market if we can, if we see even more pressure from the PPI. However, if that PPI comes in um, as not a big deal or comes in um, to the bullish side, we might see this push back down, retest the support, maybe even break that trend. Or like I said yesterday, that possibility that we could just run sideways here in the market. Remember, um, even though we've got the pressure of these big economic reports, um, we also have the beginning of, of earnings starting on Friday with the big bank report. So it's possible these events could end up being more of a non-event as we wait for the big bank reports. Let's take a look at our T20s. Now our T2020 T2122, four week new high, new low ratio. You can see we moved down sharply here yesterday in this breaking lower. And at one point in time, we were down here in this bullish 
reversal zone. That end of day rally that we tried to push back up, we, we did a lot of whipsawing yesterday. We whipped up, whipped down, whipped up, whipped down. But as you can see, we ended up finishing just above that um, bullish reversal zone. So if the bulls can find inspiration today, well, my goodness, we've opened up a big opportunity here for them to move. If the bears were to find inspiration, well, um, not as much room to the downside. So the PPI possibly could be less impactful than what we saw in the CPI. We'll want to watch that carefully. And if we do start to get to re a relief um, to the upside, we've certainly opened up a big opportunity for a relief to the upside. So be prepared for that. Our T2108, the percentage of stocks above the 40 day, well, this showed that pressure yesterday where we broke down below that 50% area here in the chart. And that is kind of a key psychological area. Uh, uh, the percentage of stocks above the 40 day and having that fall below 50% does raise a little bit of concern. But you will notice that if I pull this back, there is some price support right here in this area. Um, to be made aware of. And if we can hold in this area and bounce back up off of that and come back up and test that 50 day or 50% or area of the chart, well, maybe not too terrible of, um, of, of a situation just yet here. Um, popping back up and failing that would probably raise a lot more concern in the market. So let's keep an eye on that. Obviously, the bears were in control yesterday. Now, if they continue to push on lower, we start pushing down into these levels of the chart, we could expect fear really to start coming up in the market substantially. And we might get a little bit of pile on sailing, selling and everybody kind of running for the door at the same time to protect profits. Our T2107, T2107 did pull back yesterday, but not terrible. We did break this upside trend in here. Notice we've got some price support. We're still well above that 50% area here. This is a percentage of stocks above the 200 day. I don't see this as awful yet. So I'm gonna give the edge right here on this one to the bulls, even though we did sell off, we're still kind of holding in there and you'll notice that we've got good areas of price support in here underneath before we even reach that 50% area. So um, still hanging in there on T2107. And then our T2101, the breadth of the market yesterday did rally a little bit. But remember, when we see the breadth of the market rallying on a sell day, that's not what the bulls want to see. We're starting to push up here on that bearish wave. Now, I will tell you, I would have expected with such a big move that we would have seen more bearish engagement here pushing this breadth higher. Didn't happen. So I can't really say that yesterday was horrible. Um, it, was, it was a good pullback, um, a necessary pullback in the market, but I didn't see those bears really run in and say, hey, we're really ready to just sell and sell and sell. Didn't see that there, but if we were to get a follow through with that PPI that adds additional pressure to inflation, then we might actually see that start to extend up here on that bear wave. And that's where we can run into a little bit of problem here in the market. So watch that carefully here today. Let's take a look at our um, economic calendar here for today. And when we look at our economic calendar, well, what we've been talking about all morning, we're gonna first off, well, at the same time, really, we're gonna get jobless claims. Jobless claims are looking at 215,000 in the consensus, which is less than last time. And one of the problems that we're having in the market is the hot jobs. The jobs continue to stay very, very st strong. And we get what's called a wage price spiral. So for example, we, we have um, employers here um, trying to keep employees on and um, to keep them um, happy, they're raising wages and we're spiraling out. And those people are spending more money out into the market, continuing to do that work. And we're coming back around and we're just doing this over and over and over again. And we're spiraling 
this um, situation in inflation. Remember that inflation is too much capital chasing too few products. And as we continue to raise those salaries and people are going out and spending that, and as we continue to see the federal government doing things like forgiving loans and all of those kind of things, that just adds more fuel to that fire, inflation fire, fanning those flames and maybe pushing us higher in inflation. So what we really need to see is we really need to start seeing to help out the Fed here in lowering those rates is we need to see joblessness start to pick up a little bit more. Now I know that it stinks to say that. No one wants to see more people on the unemployment line, but it is a situation that would improve our inflation quite substantially. If all of a sudden people started fearing for their jobs, then we would see people staying put a little bit. We would likely see um, some of those things start to ease. And then we would um, see that this current um, interest rate would be restrictive enough to hold us down. But if we continue to see that spiral happening in here, we could really see a reignition of inflation. So watch that carefully on these jobs. We need to see that starting to come up. And then on the PPI right now, the consensus, well, obviously they were really wrong yesterday. They could be just as wrong today, noticing that the month over month, they came in at 0.6 last time and they're expecting it to cut by half. It might be a pretty big stretch here, so we could miss on that number. Year over year, 1.6, and they're looking for that to increase to 2.3. We've got X Food and Energy looking at 0.2, which is a decline from 0.3, and X Food and Energy year over year going higher at 2.3 from 2.0. So we'll want to watch those pretty carefully. I think there's a high probability these numbers are a miss today, but that's just my opinion. So watch that carefully here this morning as that number comes out. Um, at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. We're going to have William speaking here. We've got a natural gas report. We've got some bond auctions in here. We've got a four, an eight week, and a 30 year bond auction. This one would be really interesting to pay attention to as those numbers have been creeping up here even this morning. We'll want to watch that carefully. And then we've got Collins and Bostic that will be speaking before the market close. And then the Fed balance sheet after that. As we get through that, remember we've got export, import export prices and we've got consumer sentiment, Baker Hughes and a few more Fed speakers to be dealing with. But everyone's going to be focused on those big bank reports tomorrow morning. So kind of keep that in mind. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Let's take a look at our um, earnings calendar here for today. Earnings calendar, pretty light, but we do have some good notables here this morning to be paying attention to. KMX reporting earnings this morning. Looks like they're feeling a little bit on the bearish side after that earnings report, so keep an eye on that. We've got um, STZ Constellation Brands reporting today. It looks I'm not sure this is reported yet, but watch that carefully. We're going to have Fastenal reporting today. It looks like a little bit of bearishness coming in off of that earnings report this morning as well. And we're going to hear from Love and Love also feeling a little bit of bearish pinch here this morning after their report. So yeah, uh, that influence of the market showing that bearishness, we're, we're not giving um, benefit of the doubt, it looks like, to some of these earnings reports this morning. Let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, everyone, if you could do me this quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could do me that favor, and that would be click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment that helps the channel to continue to grow. Thank you so much for everyone who does take the time to do that. I truly, truly appreciate it. It means the world to me and I, um, I try to answer all of those uh, comments. So thank you everyone for um, that kind support. It, it, really, it really helps a lot.
Let's take a look at some of these stocks setting up. Remember, these aren't recommendations to buy or sell any security. Do your own due diligence, follow your trading rules, your trading plan, and also make sure that you are doing um, your best work that you can in following your trading guidelines and rules. Let's take a look. You never want to blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas. That's what I'm saying. Do your own evaluation. Make the trade yours. If we take a look um, at some of these stocks, first off, um, MOS, Mosaic, still holding in here. We kind of tripped up and up and down through this alert yesterday trying to um, hang on to this price support. I would continue to keep an eye on Mosaic, maybe slipping out from under this trend a little bit, um, may need more time to rest. We've got this bigger downtrend to deal with here in Mosaic. Keep an eye on that. And I still think, um, whoops, Archer Daniels um, is setting up nicely in here. So keep an eye on that, that possibility this could rally and fill that gap here in ADM. Um, I think we have to keep an eye on Qualcomm. Qualcomm's been trying in here, trying to break that resistance last couple of days, slipping a little bit. We bounced around uh, through this alert several times yesterday, trying to decide which way we want to go, seeing that little bit of bearish pressure. If it's still, if it holds this support in here, we may just be in a range bound zone. We could still, if we can get that bullishness coming into the market, pop on through there in Qualcomm. I would watch that. I continue to like this TEVA. Still holding in here, we do have a bit of a double top pattern here that is a little bit on the worrisome side. We've got our trend right in through here and we may be starting to give that up here just a little bit on this bearishness, but if we can get a bullish surge coming back in, would not be surprised to see that push on through right on to the upside. So watch that carefully um, anything in the oil sector um, we've got to be um, keeping an eye on xle continued to hold up yesterday and went on higher so watch that carefully we're continuing to see oil st stay very very strong despite the fact that the dollar went up strongly yesterday and it's really one of the only areas in commodities that did great yesterday um, because the dollar started to strengthen so much. So watch that carefully. The dollar still has that opportunity. It can move higher and fill this gap. So watch that dollar strength. You can see this morning we're looking at a pullback in that dollar. But boy, anything is possible as we continue to see these currency manipulations occurring You know, in China, in Japan, um, things around the world starting to shake up that currency market here just a bit. So watch that closely. And then, of course, bonds, bond yields affecting um, that dollar strength uh, dramatically as well. Let's take a look at uh, some other stocks in here. Um, take a look at uh, PSX. PSX has a nice pullback to price support in here trying to find um, that support and trying to hammer yesterday any follow through on this this morning could set up that um, bullish opportunity to the upside. You want to take a look at some of the tech giants out there. Um, Microsoft still holding in a very bullish pattern. You can see trying to push up here this morning in the pre-market. Every reason to believe here on Microsoft that they're going to push this right on through and keep going to the upside. There's not an analyst out there that's not pumping and continuing to say these got to go higher they got to go higher so watch that carefully on microsoft google has been doing incredibly well and rested just a little bit yesterday um, after breaking through this resistance up here so every reason to believe if we can hold that area up here kind of hold on to this trend we'll find that next opportunity to the upside in google and then meta um, there's just been no stopping this uh, to the upside at least yet holding on to this price support in this little bit of a pullback this could set up that resumption to the upside here very easily 
keep an eye on Meta. Now, a couple that I'm not so happy with and um, actually um, continue to look bearish, and that would be Apple. Apple continuing to rest underneath this downtrend, and I think there's every reason to believe we can at least push down to this price support area of the chart. Um, if if you're um, a, an Uber bull on Apple, this might be an area to catch a big price support and maybe put in some bull put credit spreads or something like that to um, uh, catch that bounce to the upside. But I would watch carefully for that possibility that Apple could slip and drop down below that area. And that would be a pretty big hole underneath here and the next major support area being down in here. So we could really see Apple sink if it falls through that area. Um, AMD is another one. Um, concerned about here AMD slipping as you can see in this nice little failing pattern we're consolidating this move over here we have been resilient in holding on to this support area but it's only going to take a little bit of a push to push us off of that edge as we approach this downtrend and push us off that edge and we can move on down to this next level here in AMD. So watch, watch carefully for that. And there are, you know, other things out there that have been um, just making that little bit of a slip. You can see here in um, IBM slipping lower here, uh, drifting down below some support here in the chart and probably going to be seeking levels down in here. Um, in IBM. So we're seeing a little bit of that tech um, area feeling some pressure and pushing back overall in the market. Now when we take a look at our banks, um, our bankings uh, with the bonds going up and fear of inflation and this this creates pressure in those banks. We did break some support in here yesterday. Now that doesn't mean that, that we should just run out and immediately short um, something in the banks. What I would want to do as this pushes down, I would want to see this come back, rally back, and find this downtrend. And then I would look for that potential short. And we do have to remember that some of these big banks are going to start reporting on Friday. And maybe everything changes here in these banks. We could go sharply lower. We could reverse and come sharply back. So be kind of careful here in the financials. But I got to tell you, when we look at, um, there were more stories out here saying there's some stress building in these regional banks. Good solid move down yesterday. That possibility that we could break down below this area of support in some of these regionals. So be careful. In fact, there's a watch list of stocks out there that are really close to that potential failure here in regional banks. So watch that carefully. And that would add quite a little bit of pressure to the market if we start to see some of these financials um, start to falter. So watch that very closely. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. Thanks so much for being here this morning. I truly appreciate it. I want to wish you all the best. Remember, we get through these data points here um, in the beginning of earnings. Who knows where we're going to be, what direction we're going to be going in. So make sure you're planning your risk carefully. You understand that the we could see some substantial volatility and some big point whipsaws here over the next couple of days. So be prepared. Y'all take care. Be safe. I'll see you right back here bright and early Friday morning. And I wish you all the very, very best.